Hello and welcome to the Glampy Tech Podcast. My name's Nick Perslow and every week a guest expert is going to join me to deliver advice and inspiration for anyone who runs a glamping site or is thinking of setting one up. In this episode, I interviewed Callum McLeod, the founder of Glampy Tech, as he gave us a story of how Glampy Tech came to be. As this is the first episode, I thought it was important for you to learn our story so you have an idea of what we do as we deliver value in future episodes. As well as giving Glampy Tech's backstory, we discuss some really important topics for current and prospective glamping site owners, including hot tubs, marketing before you launch your site, and differentiating yourself from the competition. Now, before we get into the discussion, I want to mention two things. One, this episode is sponsored by Made of Bits. Made of Bits are a CNC and design studio based in Matlock, Derbyshire. They specialise in supplying bespoke frames for glamping pods, so if there are any glamping pod manufacturers listening, or anyone who wants to have a go at building their own glamping pods, give Made of Bits a call. The link to their website will be in the description. Secondly, this is our first go at podcasting. There will probably be some hiccups along the way, so don't expect us to be challenging Joe Rogan anytime soon. However, we do promise to work as hard as we possibly can to improve with every episode, so please let us know if you have any recommendations as to how the listener experience can be improved. And with that, I think we're ready to go. So, Callum, my boss, how are you doing? I'm good, Nick. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. I thought I'd start off by just getting a um, a little bit of your backstory and how you got into the glamping business. Um, so if you could just give us a run through of basically how you got from idea to how Glamping Tech started. Yeah, of course, of course. So it actually starts with a business separate to Glamprotect, um, which now they, they both feed off each other. But the whole concept came from a separate business, and that's North Coast 500 Pods. Uh, it was a few years ago, uh, I think it was three or four years ago, um, I there was some family land, uh, my mum and dad owned some land, and um, they hadn't done anything with it for a long time. They were going to build a holiday home on it, but it turned out that they ended up just not doing that and it, it kind of got left to do nothing and when I came of an age that I realized that that land had potential to do something um, to generate money or generate holiday accommodation or something I thought I'm going to make an, an attempt at doing this and um, I had some ability with CAD and design and planning applications through my job at the time I must have been 23 24 maybe um, and I had CAD ability, no money and no no um, kind of anything else, but I had CAD ability. Um, so I produced a planning application for glamping pods um, and kind of never really thought much more of it at the time. I put it away into planning and a few months later, planning came back and accepted it. And at that point, um, it was fantastic. It had incredible earning potential. We're on a fantastic location on the North Coast 500 up at the top of Scotland. Um, which was growing in popularity. We were at a fantastic beach. Uh, we had loads of good things going for us, um, which actually at the moment isn't even super important for glamping sites. Glamping sites are so popular at the moment that you actually don't even need all of these added benefits. You know, if you even have one, that's that's probably enough. Um, but we had loads of different things going for us. So, uh, well, I say we, it was me at the time, uh, a guy with some drawings and a, a bit of a dream and nothing else. And so I needed money and I, I didn't have it. I didn't really know how to come across money um, at that age. Uh, but I, I kind of thought about a few different things. And anyway, it turned out that um, there was some private investment kind of sitting on my doorstep, which I think is a very pertinent point for a lot of people at home that are potentially thinking about starting up glamping sites just now is money is actually closer than you think it is. Um, you know, everyone thinks, oh, how can, how can I find money? And they just, they can't even think of the, the obvious. There's people close to you that will have money nine times out of 10 and will want to invest in things like this. So, yeah, that's a very pertinent point, I think, for the people listening. That was, um, that so, was Ali, Ali, right? You're the co-founder of Yeah, Gantic. that was Ali. So um, he was actually my cousin's friend. I'd been on Ali Stag too. He, he, he would be classed as my friend as well. Um, and he messaged me one day, he was actually out drunk on the night out, and he messaged me and said, it, it, uh, I've heard that you've got plans for glamping pods in Achmelvik. And I said, yeah. I was like, I want involved. So um, I, I went round to his um, and we had a chat about it and he 
he's a very shrewd guy. Like I, I was shocked that he even wanted involved. Um, he's such a shrewd guy, and that was how, how he had the money to be able to invest. Um, but I, I proposed the vision and the potential to him, and as shrewd as he was, he went for it, uh, and and he invested in the business, um, which ultimately turned into North Coast Five Hundred Pod. So that was in the August of two thousand and. Uh, 18 and we started build in January February of 2019 and we opened in May of 2019 uh, so we've been open you know 18 months or something like that uh, minus obviously the COVID restrictions however long that shut us for um, and, and so that was how North Coast 500 pods opened uh, and now you're thinking how does this relate to Glamprotect well the year that I went looking for pods uh, to buy them for North Coast 500 Pods, I was walking around the glamping show and uh, there was all these other potential glamping site owners walking around as well, looking to uh, potentially start glamping sites. They're looking at, you know, pods. They're looking at all the um, additional people that are there, the hot tubs, the fire pits and all these sorts of things. And I, I was walking around the glamping show myself and I had my plans that I'd done in my pocket. And... I was looking at my plans and I was thinking every single person here needs plans and nobody is selling it. There's nobody here that's offering plans, offering planning advice, planning help, uh, all of the stuff that I've just done and learned for myself. Um, nobody is offering that and every single person here needs it. So with the kind of, I've got quite an entrepreneurial mind and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to do this. Why not? Um, so that was, you know, probably a couple of years ago now um, that that I had those thoughts. It was actually September, so it must have been two two and a bit years ago um, was when I had those initial thoughts. Why do you think um, people need so much help with planning permission? What what's so difficult about it? So, planning permission in general, there's a lot of experts out there in planning permission. There's a lot of architects, a lot of designers, a lot of um, people that do houses, people that maybe do some stuff out out in um, you know green areas and stuff like that, but uh, there's nobody that does specifically glamping, and um, because of that, there was no experts in the field. So planning itself is obviously so important because you need it to legally be allowed to open and have customers and all these sorts of things. It's 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 bread and butter of having a glamping site. It's just one of the prerequisites that you need, um, and then beyond that. Um, you know, generally, whatever you do, you, you need an expert in the field. And there was no experts in the field at the time when I realized that this is what we should be doing. Okay, so once you're at the glamping show and you realize people needed your help with planning permission, where did you go from there? So I went away back home and I kind of had a think about it. And again, it was one of those that I left on the back burner for a little while. And it's funny. Um, this is actually quite pertinent to everyone listening at home as well is a lot of the clients and potential clients that we speak to always think, you know, oh, I'll leave it six months, I'll leave it nine months, I'll do it next year. And that was exactly what I did with Glamprotect. And um, <laughs> I'd be in a very different place just now if um, if I hadn't done that. I wish I'd done it the day that I thought of it. Um, I went home and I kind of did a little bit writing out and stuff like that and I left it. Um, but if I started this nine months earlier, I, I, it's crazy to think where it, where it would be now. Where we're going to be in nine months is incredible. And if we could have that now, even better. Um, not that I regret it, it would just be nicer to have done it um, a little bit quicker. So I jotted a few things down, waited a few months, maybe six months. It got to uh, around about June of uh, 2019. Um, it was when our site had opened itself. We'd done the website, we'd done the marketing, we'd done the social media, and we realised that what we've done for NC500 Pods is so helpful to all these other people that are looking to start up glamping sites. And that was the point when the penny dropped and I went, you know what? We are needed. Um, as a company, Glamprotect is needed to help these people that are looking to set up glamping businesses. Um, you know, there's nobody there to hold their hand. There's nobody there to give them an understanding of how to set up a glamping business. And that's where we realized that we would come in. So I was chatting to Ali, my business partner in North Coast 500 Pods, and um, we worked so well together on North Coast 500 Pods. And he said, look, I'd be interested in getting involved. I said, let's go for it. Let's, um, let's do it together. 
and so we did. And um, quite quickly, we, we gained some traction. We, we did a lot of marketing and, um, you know, got on the phone to a few different people, all these sorts of things, and um, went to the glamping show that year, so September 2019, and got a few sales. And it was our first sales, and uh, it, it was crazy. It was, it was really cool. Um, you know, that, that first, first sale, it was the same with uh, North Coast 500 Pod, that first booking um it is cool like that it's like wow somebody's actually paid us money for this um and that again for the guys at home is is an amazing feeling it's one of the best things uh when you actually get people to the first people to pay you money to come and stay it's great and it was the same with glam protect and that kind of reaffirmed to us that we were needed for all we'd done the market research we'd got the understanding we'd realized that we're needed it's still just good to solidify it by somebody else paying you money to do it so we went about starting our work and at the time both Ali and I were still in jobs um we obviously paid all the money for North Coast 500 pods and it was starting to pay back but we weren't taking any money from it at the time and um Glam Protect had only just got his first couple of clients so for the next two months um we were spending more and more time as much as we could uh out with our own jobs on uh, growing Glam Protect and pushing North Coast 500 pods as well. And so we we got a few more sales. And at that point, I kind of looked at the finances and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to go for this 100%. Because with with what's been shown already, with the feedback that we're getting from the clients, the, the realization of how needed we actually are in the glamping industry, with helping people setting up glamping businesses, helping people with planning permission, uh, we we I went all in and I left my job. Um, you know what? It's only just over a year ago. Uh, it was December of of twenty nineteen. Um, so left my job and went quite quickly from strength to strength. The the traction in January was amazing. Uh, again, you know, with with our marketing and with the fact that we were the only experts in the field. Um, then February was good. March was, was okay. And then obviously coronavirus really hit. And um, it was, yeah, it was a little bit of a tough time in April, I would say, end of March, start of April. And then, you know, once everyone got over the panic and fear of the coronavirus, because you know what it was like at the start, everyone was thinking we're going to die. It's it, like all these bad things, let's shut up shop. So, yeah, once we got to end of April, start of May, people suddenly went, hold on a minute here. Uh, we've gone from this is really bad to actually we can really make good of this bad. Uh, all the people that were realizing staycations are going to explode as soon as people are allowed out of their houses. Um, the kind of the forward thinkers that owned land were starting to jump at setting up glamping sites and very quickly we went from, you know, we, we had enough work to, to be fine from the first few months. Um, and then there was a little lull for the start of coronavirus, but we very quickly went from um, that to, okay, we need people to help us. We've, we've blown up. It's, it's gone crazy. And, and that's kind of how it all started. That was when Glam Protect really started, was, was only April um, off the back of the coronavirus. And very quickly, we started to bring in uh, other experts. Um, so we brought in two architects. That was the first people that we brought in. And um, they they kind of revitalized us. It went from um, Ali and I with some planning knowledge um, to two guys that had over 30 years of experience between them um, coming in. And I mean, they, they revitalized all the drawings, the planning applications just got so much better and um you know everything that we did suddenly became very very professional we, we were professional enough before to to kind of get by but bringing in these guys just made us you know the the knowledge the experience uh both of them had experience in uh land um you know land out in the countryside and stuff like that getting planning applications in there and and that kind of gave us a good boost and from there, I think month on month, we've, we've taken on, you know, several people every month. Um, and we're now at uh, 15 at the last count. We're looking to bring in another seven 
this month uh, in, in various different aspects um, of the business um, to just help the guys that are currently here. So um, everyone that's in is, um, you know, got, got a great uh, knowledge and experience um, of glamping already with, you know, they've gone and stayed in our, our glamping um, locations on North Coast 500 pods. They've um, all worked within um, glamping for probably more than most people. And um, yeah, we, as far as we're aware, we're the market leaders and industry experts in the field uh, for what we do. So that is the kind of whistle stop tour of how it all started. So I don't want this podcast to be a sales podcast, really, but because it's the yeah. first episode, it's probably worth running through what exactly Glamper Tech do from feasibility studies all the way to the Glamper Tech Academy. So why don't you want us yeah. to do that? Yep, cool. So I'll give you a quick run through of kind of everything that Glamper Tech does. Um, just a kind of overview of, of what we do. I'll not go into too much depth, but just the kind of things that we can help with. Um, so again, I'll take you back to a previous glamping show. It was a glamping show of 2019. And by that point, we'd, we'd set up and we'd started and we were doing a presentation. And we, um, at the start of the presentation, to gain an understanding of who we were talking to so that we could tailor the presentation to them, we said, how many guys out there own a glamping site? Put your hands up. And I think one person put their hand up. How many have a glamping site and build? I think it was one again. How many have a glamping site that's got planning accepted? It was one again. Go all the way down to how many people are out there that want to start a glamping site, have a bit of land uh, or don't have land and don't really know what to do now. And just about everybody else put their hands up. There was there was maybe 50 people there. 45 of them put their hands up for um, wanting to do it but not really knowing where to start. And so we tailored the presentation to that and we kind of, we did our whole thing and, and that was great. And then in the car on the way home, I thought to myself, how can we help those people? How can we help the people that either do or don't have land that really want to start a glamping business, but don't know where to start? And that was when the feasibility study sprung to mind. I thought we can do feasibility studies for these people. We can gain an understanding of the planning probability the construction challenges that they'll have, the demand and competitor analysis, so who's around them, how much money uh, they're all charging, the return on investment analysis, so how much money they're going to make back versus how much they put in, and uh, you know, a bit of conclusions, next steps, timelines for, for going forward. And, and we kind of brought all that together, realizing that that was going to be the most beneficial thing to the people out there that wanted to start glamping businesses. So that became the crux of our business quite quickly, and, you know, everyone that gets one absolutely raves about it and, and says, you know, I can't believe that this was only um, this only cost what it did. So that's our, our kind of first and main offering um, for people looking to start up a glamping business. And then beyond that, we help with pre-planning applications, which would be a submission to the local council to ask them their opinion of the potential glamping site that you're looking to set up. The full planning applications, which is our, our main thing. Um, we we are taking on a, a great deal of them at the moment. We've, we've got over 50 planning applications in with various councils right up and down the country uh, as, as it stands. And um, then from there, we can help with building warrants if, if people need them. And beyond that, websites, marketing, uh, channel manager systems and all these sorts of things. So that is something I actually think is very useful for the people at home um, to realise is that you can't just build and they will come. Uh, well, actually, with the way the glamping industry is at the moment, you maybe could. But um, as you get down the line, as we get more glamping sites out there, you need to make yourself seen and heard. And you can do that through websites and marketing. As I say, I'll not go into too much depth in that, but um, it's it's pertinent to understand. Well, marketing was really important for you, wasn't it, for NC500 Pods, because you started marketing before you were actually set up, right? 100%. So we had our social media going over a year before we opened and set up. And because of that, in our first month of being open, we had 75% occupancy, which is absolutely insane. Um, there will be very few sites in the world that will have ever done that. But because we had a good following, and crucially what we did was we got the following involved in the journey. And this is actually a really interesting one. I said I wasn't going to go into too much depth, but this is actually really important. Uh, if you can get your um, social media viewership to join in the journey with you, uh, you know, 
photos of you. Oh, here's me standing at the land. We're going to be setting up a glamping site soon. And then the diggers come in and there's photos and videos of that. And, you know, you, you get people involved in setting up the site. Oh, guys, should we get a hot tub? Should we not? Oh, what do you think of this type of path versus this one? If you can get people to join in the journey, then people will have an affinity with you and your site. And ultimately, when it opens, they'll want to book. And that's exactly what we created with our um, Facebook and our Instagram for North Coast 500 pods. And as I say, 75% occupancy when we opened, which paid dividends, uh, of course. Okay, and with that, we'll round off the discussion about Glamour Tech. That's probably the longest we'll talk about ourselves as a business throughout the whole of, the whole time this podcast runs. Um, the first time I spoke to you, actually, Callum, yeah. was um, as an interview for Made of Bits, who I used to work for. They supply frames to glamping pod manufacturers. Um, and we basically just discussed the glamping industry, and it got turned into a blog, and it did quite well and all that. Um, and in that you raised some interesting points and you basically said one of the most important things any glamping site owner can do is to try and differentiate themselves from the competition as much as possible whether it's through having usps on your site or um, having better marketing than your competitors Um, so i'm just wondering why you think it is so important especially in the for the long-term health of your glamping business to differentiate your glamping site from your competitors yeah, 100%. So that is so important. Uh, for ourselves, you've maybe realised that we want to have all of the USPs. We want to have all of the things that differentiate us. We want to have everything. Now, I wouldn't recommend that um, potential glamping site owners need all of that, but I would recommend that you do at least have one or two different USPs. And now for the benefit of the people at home, USPs is a unique selling point. So it's things that differentiate you from the other people. Um, and so... I mean, at the moment, here, here's a, a key thing. At the moment, um, anyone could chuck up a glamping site in their field and they could make money and they could, you know, live um, for two years and have a great time uh, or three years and it might be four or five. Um, but uh, crucially, that's not going to be around forever. Currently, the demand for glamping sites massively outweighs the supply and it will do for a long time to come given that the lag of people thinking, oh, I want to start a glamping site to actually making it happen is probably a year. So anyone that's currently seeing the demand is going to take a year to actually fix the supply. And and so we're going to have that big lag and it's going to go on for a while. Um, but there, there's a key thing that people mention a lot uh, and that's saturation. A lot of our potential clients and current clients ask us about saturation. And my answer to it is this. Saturation probably will come. It might not. You know, we're, I don't have a, a crystal ball. It might not come. But I would suspect that sooner or later, um, with the, the lifestyle and um, potential earnings and all that sort of stuff that owning a glamping site can bring, there's going to be a lot of people that want to do it. And... You know, we might get to a point where we've got a lot of glamping sites and the supply matches the demand or maybe even the the supply goes slightly um, above the demand. And when we get to that point, that's when USPs are massively important. They're already a little bit important um, at the start. You always want to be oversubscribed. I'd much rather have four units and have a demand for eight than have four units and have a demand for two, uh, of course. Um, so I would always recommend you bring in the USPs anyway, but you probably don't need them just now. But when that saturation point does come, that's when um, it will sort out naturally through USPs um, who, who's good and who's not, and therefore who's going to be more successful and who's not. Could you give the listeners some ideas on some potential USPs they could introduce to their glamping site? Yeah, absolutely. So there's different types of USPs. Uh, And I'll start with one of the ones that's actually the most important, although it's potentially arguably not necessarily a USP, um, is marketing. Um, A lot of glamping sites out there have got an okay website and and an okay social media, and that's kind of it. I would really recommend to differentiate yourself um, to get really good on social media, get active, get lots of good photos up, um, interact with your potential customers, uh, on social media 
uh, and you know have a great website, an, an easy to use booking system and channel manager system because again that crucially differentiates people. Get yourself on Booking.com, Expedia, Airbnb. Now yes, they charge a percentage. Just add that on, uh, and and that's fine. Um, so front end differentiation is massively important, and then beyond that, actual genuine USPs is things like hot tubs, saunas. Um, in our own sites themselves, we have Amazon Alexas and Philips Hue lighting. So you can say, Alexa, make the lights go red, the whole pod turns red. And the amount of reviews that we've had, five-star reviews of people saying the kids couldn't believe it. They thought they were talking to, I don't even know what, and there was a magician changing the lights. And um, and people love that sort of stuff. And, you know, the, the Amazon Alexa cost like £50. And the Philips Hue lighting for the entire unit was like three, four hundred pounds. And for the benefits that that gives us, um, it's just such a neg- negligible cost. Um, for our own site, uh, our own second site, we put a sauna. Um, again, a little bit of a cost associated, more of a cost, of course, than the, the lights and stuff. Um, but um, a lot more people want to go and stay with us. Uh, we did think about hot tubs, but they're hard work. Uh, I'll not go into depth in that too much, but hot tubs are amazing, great USP, but they are hard work. Um, you know, log burners, communal areas, we've got a communal area, uh, a big decking with a fire pit and um, bean bags and a barbecue. Uh, all these sorts of things that you would want when you go away um, that you don't necessarily need, but, uh, you know, when they're there, they make people's experience a lot better. So anything that just makes you a bit different, a bit quirky, uh, something that people are going to get excited about when they come that they probably don't have in their own home. I think that's a good point, actually. Things that people probably don't have in their own home. Not many people can say, Alexa, make lights go red and the house turns red. Um, probably not many people have got a barbecue and a bean bag in their back garden that they can go and have some burgers out in the sun. Um, so all these sorts of things that just make you different um, to, to the competitors will short term obviously benefit you um, and long term really benefit you so to pick you up on your point about hot tubs um, we won't go into depth about the logistical issues of them because they they can be quite tricky but if you are prepared to go through the hard work of getting them on your site and maintaining them I think they can be huge um, when combined with marketing because glamping is inherently instagrammable especially when um especially when hot tubs are involved. Hot tubs are huge at the minute. You see them all over Instagram. And I, I, I did just want to make the point of how, how powerful that can be as a marketing tool in, in 2021. And there's actually, that is mentioned in the industry forecast that at the time of um, recording this podcast is going to be released tomorrow, but it will have been out for a week or two by the time this is published. Amazing. Uh, one actually, one thing to mention on the hot tubs, um, just obviously you said, yeah, they can be a bit of a benefit. <laughs> I would just like to emphasize how much of a benefit they can be. Um, obviously, we do a lot of feasibility studies and therefore we understand uh, how much money a glamping site should make, how much it should charge per night, right up and down the country. We, we've got data and an understanding on all of these. And uh, we have seen that glamping sites can make up to 50 or 60 pounds per night extra for having a hot tub in there. Like it is that crazy. Um, there, there's a lot of sites that will maybe be a hundred pounds a night without the hot tub, or a hundred and fifty with the hot tub, which is just insane. And um, occupancies go up. You know, you can see a big jump in occupancies with North Coast 500 pods. We get messages every single day saying, "Oh, do you, do you guys have a hot tub?" And we don't. Um, crucially, we've been able to oversubscribe ourselves in loads of other ways um, without having the logistical issues of hot tubs. Um, But if you're comfortable with the logistical issues and feel free to reach out to me, I'm happy to chat to you about the logistical issues uh, another time for the people at home. Um, But yeah, if if you can get over the logistical issues financially um, and for occupancy, uh, it, it is a massive, massive benefit. So Callum, you're currently actually in Dubai. Um, You've been there since November, is it? It is, yeah, yes. Yeah. So it's been just over two months, I think, I've been here. And you're going to be there for longer, are you? Yeah, I, I don't think I'll be coming home anytime soon. Uh, I actually came on a holiday and quite quickly realised 
um, that I could achieve one of Glampatech's ambitions quite a lot quicker than I initially thought. And that ambition is to take us global. Um, so currently, um, well, when I came on a holiday, it, it was literally just a holiday. I came for, for a week. And um, me being me, I'm, I'm nosy about glamping. I, I like to know what's going on. And I did a bit of research. I looked at various different glamping sites in and around Dubai. And everything was fully booked, literally for months. And I thought to myself, hold on a minute, here's a, here's a, a bit of an opportunity. Um, and so I decided to stay. And um, we're now in the process of potentially setting up a glamping site for ourselves in Dubai uh, with the view of doing exactly what we'd said earlier in the podcast. Um, and that is set up a site for ourselves, get an understanding of how it works and then replicate that for other people and help them to set up glamping sites. And so that's one of the things that I'm doing just now is um, looking um, to start a glamping site out here. Uh, which is cool. It, is, it feels like I'm kind of back at school again because everything now, we, we've got a really good understanding as a business in the UK of how to set up glamping sites. We, we've kind of got it nailed down. But back out here, I feel like, you know, I obviously know lots about glamping, but how do I do it in a new country? How do I do, how, how do I get land? How do I do that? How do I do this? And it makes me, it takes me back to where I used to be and where our current potential clients are probably a lot of the guys listening um here are are experiencing the same things as me and that's cool um so yeah we we will likely be setting up a glamping site uh in or around dubai over the next wee while uh, i don't know how long they'll be here for um but crucially uh something that you mentioned earlier on um i don't know if it was in the podcast or not was remote working and um i i was quite against remote working um a while ago um, I lived, um, you know, with other people and uh, a dog and all that sort of stuff. And it just made it very hard to be able to work from home. Um, but out here, uh, f- for all, um, you know, I'm not, it's not like I'm working from a hotel room. I've, I've got an office out here just now. And, and that really helps. Um, but the, the whole remote thing, I've just kind of got very used to it quite quickly. Uh, you know, once you're forced into something, you actually just need to deal with it and realize that it's not actually that bad. So, yeah, remote working has been quite good. Um, and, you know, it's exciting times uh, out here. You know, if we can set up a glamping site out here, um, which I've got the full confidence that we'll be capable of doing, um, start Glampitech UAE and then start to replicate that around the world. Uh, and you'll bring our offering and our help to people around the world. Um, that's, you know, you probably realised from what I said earlier um, about wanting to be able to help more people at once. And that was why we started the Academy. Um, if we can take it worldwide and help more people worldwide, even better. So we want to make uh, 2021 a huge year for Glampy Tech. And so we've got plenty of things lined up for the, for the next year. Um, so Callum, do you want to run us through some of those, please? Yeah, of course. So we've got some massive things. Again, uh, you'll probably realise that uh, we cater to the demand. And so we've been listening to what people have been saying and we've created a few different things to help them. So obviously the Academy uh, is one of the, the soonest things to be coming out. It's, uh, I think, applications close tomorrow, uh, which means that by the time people are listening to this, they'll have missed this application set, but there'll be more applications for the next one. Um, and that's really exciting. We've also, uh, tomorrow, which again, by the time people are listening, will, will have already happened. Uh, we have the uh, glamping industry forecast for 2021. I wonder who wrote that. I wonder who wrote that. Well, that was exactly what I was going to say, was there's this amazing guy uh, that works for us that's written it, uh, who's also the host of your podcast today, guys. Um, so Nick, Nick wrote that, um, and it's fantastic. I, I, um, I was really impressed. It's, it's something I wouldn't even, even have been able to do. I don't know if it's because of attention span or not, um but, well, a level uh, yeah. english literature came in handy Aye, exactly <laughs> uh, i think i failed higher english so there's there's a difference um so yeah next smashed it the the forecast incredible the insight in there um is is second to none it's something that actually for all we're offering out for free i know that there's manufacturers out there that would spend thousands of pounds buying this so you're getting an amazing uh, bit of information there for free from us um, so you can jump onto the website. Uh, by the time you guys are listening to this, it'll be available to download on the website. 
uh, and, and that'll be a fantastic one. Um, beyond that, we've got a land buying guide. Um, so again, we've had a lot of clients come to us or potential clients and they still need land for finding their glamping site. And so we, we created an offering for that, which is the land buying guide. And that's, um, that is chargeable. Um, so you can purchase that on the website. Just jump on the website or uh, reach out and have, um, have a call with one of our consultants and get a, an understanding of what we're doing there. Um, but yeah, the land buying guide is great for people that are looking to set up a glamping site but don't yet have land. Off the back of that, we're beginning a brokerage to match up people who are looking to start a glamping site with people who have land and maybe either already have planning permission for glamping or want to get planning for glamping to massively increase the value of their land to then sell it or rent it on to people that are looking to start up a glamping business. So think of the, the Tinder for glamping. No, that, sound, that sounds a little bit wrong. Not, not the, t- the Tinder for glamping site <laughs> set up. Tinder for glamping sounds a little bit ropey. Not that. T- Tinder for glamping site set up. So we're, we're, we're matchmaking, basically. Um, and uh, quite soon, we're going to have some functionality on the website and ultimately an app to be able to match people that are looking for land for glamping sites with people that have land that want to sell or rent it. So loads of stuff coming up. It's, you know, exciting stuff. And guys, uh, you know, as I've said loads of times, uh, guys at home, anything that you would like to see from us, shout about it. And if enough of you do, we will create it to help you. That's a good point. If anyone's got any suggestions for what they want Glam Protect to offer, because as Callum says, we do cater for demand. Just let us know in the comments or send us an email or whatever. Send us a message on social media. It doesn't matter. And we'll, um, we'll get back to you on that. All right, so I think that's about it, Callum. Thanks for coming on. Um, is there anything you just want to say to the audience at the very end? Yeah, of course. So, no, thank you, Nick, for having me on. Thank you for, for running this for Glam Protect. Um, I'm really looking forward to some of the stuff you've got lined up. I know you've got some great people lined up, um, you know, people again at the forefront of the industry like we are uh, to help the people at home uh, with setting up their glamping sites. So, yeah, that'll be super exciting to listen to the ones coming up uh, in the future. So, yeah, thank you for having me on. Thank you for hosting this. And, yeah, guys at home, uh, you know, if you want to reach out to me, you can you can get me uh, through Callum at glamprotect.co.uk. And that's Callum with one L. Uh, or you can ring the, the office phone on 0131 248 And yeah, we can, you know, have a chat about anything. Um, probably, uh, you know, there, there's loads of people in the team that, that can help. We've got several architects. I think we've got six architects at the moment. Um, client relationship consultants, business relationship consultants. So there's loads of people in the team. Um, so maybe actually if you want to get in touch with one of them instead, get in touch to contact at glampatech.co.uk and yeah we we can help you in any way you know get in touch for a chat and and we can definitely help so looking forward to seeing how this podcast goes looking forward to hearing from some of you guys that have listened today and good luck starting your glamping businesses thanks very much uh, we'll definitely be having you back on in the future to dig deep into some more specific issues as we look to help anyone who wants to or currently runs a glamping site yeah that's smart right thank you guys Bye. There it is, the first episode of the Glamour Tech Podcast, done and dusted. We hope you enjoyed listening and that you come away with some insight and inspiration for your glamping project. As I mentioned in the intro, this is something that we're looking to improve week on week, so it'd be hugely appreciated if you tuned in next week for episode two with Jason Devonish of Enchanted Creations. Anything mentioned today will be linked in the description, including all the details for Made of Bits, today's sponsors. A big thank you to them, and please give them a call if you're after glamping pod frames. Don't forget to follow Glamprotect on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Visit our website, and most importantly, subscribe on whichever platform you're listening on, so you don't miss a future episode. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.